Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, here today for a very exciting video. Actually, it's very exciting for you guys. For me, it's a little bit disappointing because I had to spend $3,000 on this video card you see before you. This is the NVIDIA Titan V. It no longer has the GeForce branding with it. It is the Titan series. In fact, if you go to download a driver for it, there's a new drop-down box where it just says Titan series. This is the only card. Um, it's kind of an interesting productization decision, right? They're pulling it away from the GeForce brand, trying to dissuade gamers from interest in it, which never happens, of course, no matter the price. Uh, even at $29.99, I'm sure there'll be some crazy people that go out there and buy this for gaming. What we're gonna do today is basically unbox it, show you the card, uh, take it apart, show you the GPU. This is the first time that we have had hands-on with a, uh, a Tesla, not a Tesla, a Volta V100 GPU. We'll go through all that. Let's talk about, as I remove the cover here very slowly. We'll talk about the specifications of this, right? So this is um, the GPU that was first found in their Tesla cards used for supercomputing, right? Um, it has 5,120 CUDA cores, which is a huge jump over what we had on the Titan XP, which was 3,840, so a huge jump. Um, but maybe more interesting is because this is a card really targeted at compute workloads, uh, machine learning, AI, all that type of stuff, it actually puts more emphasis on the double precision compute than we have seen on any kind of graphics card uh, format, form factor, GPU that we've seen from NVIDIA in a while. It has 2,560 FP64 cores, right? So essentially a one half ratio compared to the single precision. If you look at the Titan XP, it actually had a 1 32nd ratio, essentially giving you about 120 double precision compute core. So obviously much higher double precision compute on this guy here. So we'll go ahead and remove this out of it. The box is very similar to all the Founders Edition boxes we've seen before. Coloring on this guy is the champagne color, if you will. Not rose gold, not just silver and black. It is champagne. Um, but from a look and styling, it looks exactly like we've seen, you know, the 1080 Ti, 1080, Titan XP, uh, even, you know, uh, the cards before that as well. Got our Titan V logo. Up top, it no longer says GeForce across it. Um, and this, it just says Titan, but it is not illuminated. It's just kind of a metallic finish. One eight pin, one six pin connector. You still have your removable back plate that we'll get into when we dissect this card. And in terms of display outputs, you've got uh, one HDMI here in the middle-ish and three DisplayPort connections. So again, very similar to what we're used to seeing from these Founders Edition cards. Champagne adds a little bit of touch, maybe a little bit of class, if you will, to this. And, and for $3,000, I, you know, take it or leave it, I guess. Um, the goal of this is really developers who need a card to either um, productize or, or, or template or um, you know, just basically work on software, but they don't want to deal with uh, huge server infrastructures, renting server time in the cloud, or what, or what have you. Uh, other specifications that are interesting on here, this is the GPU that has 640 tensor cores, right? Um, accessing them is going to be unique, right? You have to have machine learning workloads. We're kind of working on some ideas on how to benchmark and test that stuff. 320 texture units. It has a base clock of 1200 megahertz and a boost clock of 1455. So less than what we've seen on Pascal GPUs, but this is our first look at Volta we would expect if any consumer variants of Volta come out for them to be a little bit higher than that. It is HBM2 memory. Right, so it's running at 850 megahertz, a data rate of 1.7 gigabits per second. Uh, interestingly, this has 12 gigs of memory, while the uh, Volta, the V100 chip, has 16 gigs. Now, what we'll find is, or what we have learned by asking, is actually one of the four HBM memory stacks is actually disabled, right? So um, whether that be for a yield issue or simply, you know, product classification, you're only accessing three of the four HBM blocks, which means rather than have a 4,000-bit uh, or so memory interface, it is equivalent of a 3072, 3072-bit memory interface. That still gets us up to 652 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, well above the 547 gigabytes per second that you get on the Titan XP. Uh, it is built on the 12 nanometer process technology and 21.1 uh, billion transistors on this GPU. It's pretty impressive. Well over the 12 billion that we get on uh, the, the GP102 from uh, the Titan XP. 250 watt TDP, all the specifications are the same. Uh, like I said, from a look and style standpoint, guys, very similar to what we're used to. 
We're going to rip this guy apart, and then after we do that, actually, here's a hint, we've already done that. We're going to uh, do our gaming benchmarks as well in a separate video and story. But let's take this guy apart, because I think a lot of people are going to be very curious about what this GPU looks like. All right, so here's our Titan V. I always think the best thing you can do to a $3,000 video card is immediately dissect it. Uh, so let's get started with that as uh, we jump into it. Obviously, first step, remove the back plate, and there are a lot of screws for this task. Apparently these screws are, are a little bit, hmm, oh, I already took that one out, are a little bit more fragile. I think I heard, I think I heard him say that like, he's broken the heads off them by tightening them down too much. So that's a good feeling. All right, remove that guy, no thermal pads on the back, nothing uh, incredible there, a little bit of inset, so it does make contact with some of the uh, power delivery hardware, uh, but I don't imagine it's making any kind of significant impact on uh, thermals. Uh, okay. Just these four left. That's a lot of nuts. All right, so now we've got the cooler disconnected here. I need to, where's my, there it is. There's our fan power cable. Now, I will say, let me disconnect that. There is a ton of thermal paste on here. Just kind of gooped all over the place. You gotta be really careful with these guys. A very similar cooler design, although if you um, if you just feel the weight of the heat sink, actually the whole card really, versus even the Titan XP, this is significantly heavier, leading me to believe that they're either the the um, vapor chamber is a little bit more dense than the fin stack, or some of the uh, uh, weight here is in the in the kind of the metallic part where it's attached to all the uh, power delivery mechanism, but there is that part disconnected. So now we've got that guy, uh, and we will attempt to clean off some of this goop. These are obviously cloth thermal pads, connect, you know, that interface between um, the heat sink here and power delivery. There, I think there are 16 phase power. Interesting, again, this is an HBM2 based GPU, so you don't see the standard GDDR5, 5X, memory surrounding it. Uh, the board layout's a little bit more simple because of that, which is which is actually kind of neat. So now let's, oh yeah, that's good stuff. Always keep your Kim wipes handy. That's what I always say. And then, we ran out of actual alcohol wipes, so we'll do this the old-fashioned way. So there it is, as we let the alcohol dry off. That is your GV100 GPU. Yeah, you can see, it's a little bit hard if I can see, there you go, if I can get it in just kind of a, just an obnoxious enough glare from uh, the lights, you can see the four memory stacks surrounding the GPU and kind of the, the um, interposers underneath it, can't actually see it. And then there's a resin here that kind of fills it in, makes it all level. And I assume that NVIDIA doesn't have any of the issues that Vega had where there's a different levels of, uh, uh, of actually the memory being level with the GPU. Um, one of these four stacks is disabled. Right. In order for this to be a Titan V, we're only accessing 12 gigs of memory and 3,072 bits of memory bus. So it's possible that one of these stacks is actually bad, didn't meet yield, and that's why um, they are releasing the part like this. Or it could be that it's just for productization, right? They wanted to make sure there was a differentiation between the part they're selling for $3,000 here to developers 
uh, and the part that they're selling for six, eight, ten thousand dollars in the server world. Also worth noting, um, there is no SLI connector on these. This is NVLink connections, um, which are on the board but not usable because when you attach the cooler to it, it actually makes these uh, inaccessible, right? You can just barely see them through the top of, of the cooler. So it uh, doesn't look like they're gonna support multi-GPU for this, um, for this developer version, um, but that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, A1 silicon, take that, oh look, hey, nice little fraction of everybody. Uh, for a little bit of size reference, let's put that down there. Always be careful with this, but here, there you go. <laughs> it's, <laughs> look at that. Now obviously it's a little bit out of scale because the, the GPU is surrounded by those HBM stacks, but uh, that, is a, that is a massive 12 billion transistor, I'm sorry, 21 billion transistor GPU. So now the question becomes for us, for you, for everybody, is what can this card do for gaming workloads? What can this card do for compute workloads? We're gonna take a look at all of that in an upcoming story, in an upcoming video here. Um, so make sure you subscribe and check back um, to find out what exactly you get for a $3,000 graphics card today. Thanks everyone.